He really doesn't like going to the vet. He also fought me quite a bit trying to get in. Good kitten internet, I hope your day is going better than his hands. Bye, soon. By the way, it's super loud here. <sighs> and there's a lot of traffic. Welcome to, well, this is definitely still not downtown Madison. Oh, actually, that would not be a bad vlog idea, was go walking around downtown, except for the fact that, well, I'm, it's probably not going to be great weather for me to do that in, at any point, but anyway, hi. I uh, just finished eating at Panera. Panera just happens to be the, and I have a rock in my shoe, um, Panera just happens to be the closest eatery to where my vet's office is, and I didn't feel like crossing a road, because what the hell. So at this point, I'm just kind of roaming around. <sighs> I gotta love it when people don't bother turning on their turn signals until they've already reached the intersection. <sighs> well, let's see. What's going on around here? Um... Looks like they're going to be opening up a car wash over there. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to walk down here is that there was a restaurant that closed during the pandemic that I was curious about. Because the sign's still up, but now I see a much smaller sign that's a for sale sign, so pretty sure they're just selling the property and haven't taken down the restaurant sign. That's unfortunate. So, while I was in Panera, the only people wearing masks beyond myself were the employees. I know that there is no longer a mask requirement here in Madison, but come on, people. It's a densely packed area. You can't maintain a two meter distance from other people. You cannot socially distance. It's not great. Anyway. This is the place that I was talking about. It's Pizza de Roma. This restaurant's huge, by the way. I never could figure out how in the world they were making any money, and I'm pretty sure the answer was that they weren't. And I think that they may have lived there, the owners. Like I said, you can see the for sale sign right there. I'm bored. I have time until Issy and Kitty's ready. They'll call me when he's ready. more for sale sign and a sign up on the door that says temporary closed pretty sure it's not temporary sadly so this was a hmm, I just love light on in there um, this was a New York pizzeria there we go uh, New York pizzeria and it was, I've only actually been inside to eat once, because, well, I wasn't here very often. I only came here when, well, basically when I had a vet appointment. I would stop by, grab a slice to eat. That was the idea, at least. I only thought of it later on. Um, just urban exploring, I suppose. Just curious to see what back here looks like. Looks like picnic benches, a squirrel. Hmm. Would have been a nice outdoor patio area. Wonder what was here prior to Pizza Roma West. Had to be something because this was way too large of a place for a pizzeria. Um, 
to give you an idea, this is the type of place that, hmm, I don't know if I can give a good comparison for those Europeans watching, but, um, so most pizzerias that I'm used to, New York style pizzerias, are relatively small. Uh, actually, I can show you one in a strip mall that's right around the corner. Might as well walk over in that direction. Um, but they're fairly small, and if they have a dining room, they're a little larger, but not that much larger. So, actually, here's a good frame of reference. That building across the street is a Chuck E. Cheese. It's a kids' dining facility, basically, where they have a bunch of arcade machines, ski ball, ticket prizes, stuff like that, and also serve pizza. This Chuck E. Cheese, the building itself, so, again, they prepare food on site, they have a lot of cleanup, they have, like, a fake live band, the whole nine yards, is a smaller building than this. Not by much, but it's very slightly smaller. This was a pizzeria that probably deserved to be, you know, in a strip mall. Strangely enough, I didn't like their pizza, but that wasn't be that much, just... So... It is so noisy. So dang noisy around here. Ugh. Um... What was I saying? So... The reason why I didn't like their pizza wasn't had, didn't have anything to do with the pizza itself, so much as I'm not a huge fan of New York style pizza. Um, that was actually the restaurant that I was planning on bringing my mother to if she ever visited up here. But alas, it was not to be. I didn't think my mom would ever willingly fly anywhere else for the rest of her life, and turns out I was right. <sighs> um. What else? Uh, so yeah, unfortunately my ears are clean and I don't have my headphones with me. I don't know why I didn't bring my headphones with me, but I didn't. So I'm having to experience probably more noise than you are because I think my microphone on this camera is pretty good at noise cancellation. We'll find out when I edit this later. Um, Normally the vet visits don't take very long, but I did arrive early. It's been about a half an hour since the appointment started, and about 45 minutes since I arrived. The cab driver arrived 10 minutes early, called me and go, well, I'm waiting, go, go into the cab, and I'm going, I haven't even put you soon in a kennel yet. Uh, you saw the earlier footage of Yasin being very unhappy about being in a kennel. Um, I don't know if you could have seen it in the video, but there was a little blanket that was underneath. That is actually a pheromone-soaked blanket. Unfortunately, Isin appears to be mostly immune to pheromones. So, uh... Ooh, ballot drop box. It's mirror-imaged for you, though, because my selfie cam is mirror-imaged. It shouldn't be in my mind. I really wish it wasn't, because then you can see cats rise up that I'm wearing. I gotta wear a cat shirt on a day that I'm visiting the vet, right? So, I'm just walking along in this neighborhood, trying to get away from the busier roads, but not so far away as to take forever to reach the vet when Nissin's ready. And then after that, I get the lovely task of calling for a cab to come home. So, yeah, that's actually another subject I can talk about, cabs. So, in Madison, there are two major cab services. Um, Three if you count, or four if you count Uber and Lyft, but really two major cab services. Um, it's Union Cab and Green Cab. There used to be quite a few more, but they've all folded or been purchased slash merged into other companies. <sighs> Mostly because Uber and Lyft kind of decimated the competition. Um, anyway. Of the two cab companies, Union Cab's the expensive one. Much more expensive than Green Cab. Uh, they're also the ones that, you know, 
have a union. Green Cab operates very similar to the way Lyft does in that everyone's an independent contractor. I am not a fan of that business model, to put it mildly. Oh, this building actually look, kind of looks nice. See? I like the little setup for an office building. Huh. I mean, I have no idea what offices are even in here. But it's a nice little setup. Kind of reminds me of some of the older buildings that the company that I worked at have, which are not that far away from here. Anyway. So anyway, um, so I try to use Union Cab whenever I need a cab because, well, I don't like supporting that business model if I can help it. The problem is that Union Cab does not allow for pets in the vehicle. Um, the only cab company in Madison that does is Green Cab. <sighs> Green Cab also did not take the pandemic very seriously. They... It was actually still there in the cab when I went. They put up a plexiglass sheet attached via Velcro to the headrests for the front... Uh, front driver and passenger seats, which, okay, fine, that's better than nothing, but the drivers <sighs> do not mask properly, to put it mildly. Um, the driver that I had this time wore his mask along his chin. Usually they tug at their mask constantly, put their nose outside of the mask, refuse to wear one, refuse, uh, start spouting out vaccine conspiracy theories. It's not a great experience. But, I don't have a choice. This is actually the biggest problem that I have living in Madison and not driving. It's getting cats to and from the vet. Even my vet themselves, um, you saw the picture of Isun in the kennel when he was on the lawn. Uh, that's because my vet is at curbside pickup only. So they expect people to stay in their cars and drop the cat off. Then drive back when the cat is ready to be picked back up. As opposed to pre-pandemic where I would go in the office with Isun and be there with my cat during the visit. Which usually calmed Isun down quite a bit more. End zone. Boo didn't care. Boo is perfectly happy doing whatever. Anyway, um, oh, it's actually starting to spit a little bit. You can actually tell from the sky it's quite gray. Um, I was not expecting to hit this far. I should probably turn around so I'm not too far away. And I don't want to go down that way because that's where there's noisy traffic at. Destroyed. So I'll just cross the road and walk back. Anyway, um... So, yeah, the problem comes in that the vet is set up where they assume everybody has a car. Because most people in Madison do. Um, Madison is a very car-centric city. It's probably my chief complaint about the city, in fact, is that it's so car-centric. I mean, that's not to say that there isn't public transportation. Actually, the public transportation here is, compared to most American cities of the same size, actually pretty good. Um, I can generally get from point A to point B with little issue. The problem is usually time. And in theory, I would be able to bring Isun aboard the bus. Uh, they stopped that during the pandemic, so I can't right now anyway. Unless if they restarted it. I actually no, don't know if they did or not. Apologies for breathing a little heavier. I'm walking uphill right now. Um, a little nice pretty area for a office area. Anyway, um, so yeah. Point is, my only option for vet visits at the moment is taking us in, shoving him into a kennel when he really, really doesn't like being in a kennel, bringing him to a cab, bringing him into a cab that doesn't treat the pandemic seriously, 
at least most of the drivers that I've had. Again, they're all independent contractors, so they're all different. Heck, they usually don't even wear seatbelts, to give you an idea. Um, put them in a cab that I don't trust the safety of, and I've had some issues with them before. Take them to the vet. Cab ride cost me money. At the vet, stand out on the yard, which right now, given that this is spring, is not really that big of a deal, but it was super hot outside like it was a couple weeks ago, or super cold like winter, that's not a viable option. Uh, wait outside, have Isin brought in. Isin's currently undergoing the checkup of some variety. Meanwhile, I'm stuck doing who knows what. I've been recording 15 minutes and I still haven't gotten a call, right? Right. Um, and then I go back to the vet's office, which, let's see, see that taller roof behind the roof in front of me? That's actually the vet's office, so I'm basically just walking back and forth around it. So wait around for the vet, once the vet's done, I'll get a phone call saying as soon as ready to be picked up. I go back to the vet. I give them a call again while I'm waiting. Pick up as soon. Meanwhile, I'm now waiting for a cab. And now it's raining. I did not bring my umbrella with me because I forgot to look at the forecast before leaving today. So this might be a bit miserable. I probably should have stayed in Panera, but it was noisy and so on. This is the other problem. So it's raining now. So how am I going to wait for the cab to arrive? So cabs here in Madison take a very long time to arrive typically. Um, by very long time, I mean sometimes it's pretty quick and it will take five minutes. Most times it's kind of slow and takes around 40 minutes. And sometimes it's two hours because all of the cab services in Madison are centered around the center of the city. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna have Editor, Editor Me do anything on this video or not, but if Editor Me is going to do something, he's gonna put up a map of Madison to show you the center of the city relative to the west side of Madison, which is where I live and where I do pretty much everything. Um, what this means is that they're coming from downtown, which is very congested, very, very congested, so congested that they figured out that it's no longer possible to cram more people in downtown because traffic capacity exceeds all inbound and outbound roads starting the end of this decade, I think it is. Um, I theoretically have public transit, but in reality, I don't. Even if I did have public transit, it would take me uh, about 45 minutes to get home. For reference, if I wanted to walk home, it would take me a half an hour. I'm not that far away from home. It's just, oh, transportation. Ah, what am I going to do? I was expecting them to be done by now. It's 13. These appointments normally don't take 45 minutes, so I'm wondering if there was an emergency of some variety. I mean, at least it's summer, so it's not that big of a deal if I get wet, but I don't want Nissan Kitty to get wet. He's already having a miserable day. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna stop this for now so I can put this thing up. This is what I mean by a strode. Uh, the term actually comes from a YouTube series called Not Just Pipes. Or channel, I should say. Anyway, I'm going to CVS because I have nothing else to do. No idea if you can even hear me with how noisy it is here. But while I'm just sitting here underneath an awning and hoping that it doesn't start raining hard, I just wanted to point out 
this is a pizzeria. It's a Chicago style pizzeria, but um, you can kind of see where this is two storefronts. You can't see one of them because the truck is in the way. The truck will be moving shortly. There we go. You can see it's two storefronts. Um, once you get to Cadoba, that's a different storefront area. But um, that is a pizzeria on the right side and a tiny little seating area on the left. That's more the size I expected New York style pizzeria to be. Uh, I'm just using my arm at the moment. Just sitting underneath an umbrella, you can't really see because of the background, but it's raining outside. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything to do right now, which means my brain is going in overdrive and hyperfixiating over the idea that there's something wrong. What's the problem with me being by myself with nothing to do? I I start having mental issues. And I'm having one right now. I'm going to be giving the vet a call in a couple of minutes. I mean, unfortunately, it's pouring rain now. And it's going to be for a bit. So, yeah. Fun. Maybe I should have just walked home. I could have walked home and back by now. Oh well. It has been an hour and a half since the last video, I believe. Um, Isun is still in there. There was an emergency, no, not with Isun, with uh, another cat that came in, and they had to delay things a bit. Unfortunately, they didn't tell me this, so I've been incredibly anxious, to put it mildly. Sorry, it hasn't been an hour and a half since the last video. I think it's more like an hour since the last video. Still, um, they're just going through billing at this point and should just about be done. So soon, Isin Kitty will be back. Uh... Meow. Meow. His sin's already forgiven me for today, at least, so that's good. He actually did pretty early on. He's not one to hold grudges. Pretty sure he actually forgave me before he was even out of the kennel. Son's just hungry. It's okay, seeing the candy cat. Oh. Are you done? He doesn't hide like that. Not that he's really hiding, but you know. Can't hold my arm like that for too long. There, now it's sort of balanced. Nope, it's in setting up. Your brother does want to eat with you too much today. That's fine, he doesn't have to. Hold on a moment. Just packing up and then going to sleep. So yeah, today was not the greatest day for my mental health, to put it mildly. Ooh, I need to do laundry pretty badly. Um and, I mean, part of me knows this isn't something that gets cured. My mental health struggle is permanent. It might get better over time, but it's never going to go away. And it, for some reason, it always disappoints me when it doesn't. So, I stopped myself from having too bad of a spiral, which is good. That's what I've been teaching myself how to do. Doesn't mean I'm not disappointed. And... 
<sighs> my cats are one of my weaknesses. I know that. Weakness, strength. Don't mess with my kitties. And nobody was messing with them. It, I knew, even while it was happening, that my vet was not going to hurt my cats, even though my brain kept telling me that they were doing very bad things. Oh well. I recognize it's a problem. And I'm actually going to have a video that goes over my mental health a little bit more later on this week, actually. Uh, my therapy appointment's on Thursday, and I figure I'll record that video after the therapy appointment. In any case, good night, Internet. Talk to you tomorrow.